and a few like-minded individuals got together throughout the country. So what you can see there is that now you see where you are in 1998, you can see in Pakistan there's a few people who have started but they haven't colluded yet. So you've got Saeed Qureshi, Saad Niaz, Saad Sudan, you've got Thakar, and you've got uh, Sharia here, and then you've got people up in Islamabad, you've got people over in Lahore. So we've got these areas of excellence and elsewhere. Well, at the moment, we're waiting for, to get together and talk to each other. And what we actually do, then we can have a more unified approach to training. Training programs were discussed, but were yet to be formalised. This is a training program. Increased specialisation was coming about, and courses started to be formalised. In 2008, we see a bigger step. Adult training list. An adult training list is that you go to a service list. Any chance you can put my hands on the scope? Yep, yeah. well, there you go. But oh, this is a service list, don't delay me, I will continue. That's the majority of lists that you guys will actually attend in this country. Dedicated training lists, they're a must. And so now we see them coming to the UK. So you as a trainee would come along, and we'd have five components of the list, the whole list would last three to four hours, and you would be expected to do as many of those as possible. And we'd complete. We had an organisation called JAG came in to being. They're an advisory body, joint advisory group. But what they did was to get you to record your procedures. You know how we've given you fours, threes, etc, etc. Well that then was your paper portfolio. When you got enough numbers together, like yourself, you had enough numbers together, then you would send all of that information for it to be validated to the accreditation board. The accreditation board is what I chair. Right? So pre-placement meeting. Pre-placement meetings started to come about. So you would come to this placement, you would be working in search of a I would expect you to come and see the leads here six weeks to eight weeks before you come to let them know <coughs> what you would like to learn if possible, see the difference, what they can offer you, and it gives us an opportunity to say to you what we're going to offer you and what we're going to give you and how we go about it. And in an old Irish term, fair exchange is no robbery. <coughs> so what that actually means is, you do work hard, I'll support you in what you want. And that is the moral of the story. You work hard, you deliver good work for us, make sure that you're here when you need to be here, do the work, then we'll support you in what you need. And that's what that enables you to do. Sign off of trainees is starting to be monitored, and that's through the portfolio. And they're formalised, these courses, formalised endoscopy training packages, but also registrar going through. Accredited training centres and accredited train for trainers, myself, VACA, and at the end of this course, it's asking, Saad Niaz, accredited trainers. So these things are very, very important <coughs> to do, that you have people who are keen to teach, these people in your department. Now there's a minimum. If you're a training centre, this is a training centre, in the UK, 50% of the endoscopies for this to be a training centre would have to have this qualification or that qualification. That's the gastroscopy, that's the colonoscopy. In 2016, dedicated training lists. 2016, ensure all trainees are registered with Jack before they attend the list. It's a must, so you can't come. You're not, you're not registered, you're not on a course. So, if you come to me, you're not on a course. You're on the training program. Don't come to me. Get yourself on a course. You don't have to do the course, you have to prove to me you're registered. Because this is now electronic, I can check. And I'll show you that later on. And so, and you know that because I've put them on that system. So three months, every three months you have a training meeting. All the trainees will be invited to a pre-placement meeting. So now we can see that you're invited. Before people would come, now we invite you. It's amazing how many trainees don't turn up to this meeting. Then they turn up on day one and they say, I am here. Am I supposed to look into a crystal ball to know what your needs and support is? 
So I get very, very strongly around you. If you haven't got the courtesy to contact me, you only contact me on the day or the day after that you've turned up for replacement, then you've got a long way to go to get my support from this side. It doesn't take much to contact someone. What do you say about that? Yeah, that's true, that's true. All trainers have a minimum annual review. So Fakka, myself, Saxon, she doesn't know yet, but as of this course, she will have a review of her training. And what that does is that we will sit down, watch her, and then feedback. There is a online module that we have to complete on all trainers, and that's what happens. Okay. The interesting thing for people who have gone through this programme now, if you remember in 1988, we had a sequel intubation rate of at best 60%. We now see sequel intubation rates no less than 90, 92%. People of a lot more experience are getting in their mid to late 90s. Anybody who tells you in the UK that they've got a sequel intubation rate of 99 or above are liars. I don't want to Okay. I'm liars. No one. Has got 19, has got 100 percent. No one. Signing off of trainees. Numbers alone are not an entry criteria for assessment. So what that, that, that means is, is that you do all this to get accreditable. So to get to the final assessment, getting your numbers is not an entry criteria for that. Trainees are discussed every three months, as I've said, appropriate, but then at that meeting, it's decided as a group. So, if you were a trainee with us here in surgical floor, if I was here all the time, and you said, Paul, is there any chance I can be signed off? We'd say we'd discuss you at this meeting. So, we've only just had the meeting, we're going to wait three months. Then at that meeting, Sasha, back up, myself, and all the others would sit down, and we'd say, right, how do we think it's going? Do you think he's ready to be signed off? In the sense of, is he ready to go through the assessment? It is a formal thing, it is a proper assessment. So just because we do it doesn't mean you're going to pass it. We're going to sign you off as independent. <coughs> we're not closing the door to you, but what we're saying to you is perform on the day to the way you have been performing, and we know you'll go through. After assessment, documentation is used <coughs> by a training lead, and that will be said for it, myself here. Vaka, when he was at um, Bangor, uh, he'll take that over when he goes to Manchester at some point in time, I'm sure. And submit it to JAG. All right? JAG then look at it and make sure. Electronically, because everything's electronic, there are various things as a training needs you have to have looked at. Would you believe on JAG I can tell if you've looked at it or not? I can also tell how long, much time we have spent looking at it. So if Back uh, as the training lead, you did, and then you submit your portfolio. It takes about 20 minutes to look through your portfolio. If he then submits it to me, I look at it. If he's only spent one minute, I'll send it back to him and say, is, is this correct? Because a minute doesn't say to me that he's looked through it. People don't know you, you, you've got the t you can time it. So endoscopy training programme, trainee to attend pre-placement chat, just keep an eye on the time, induction meeting, all trainees to attend, gastro trainee given at least two training lists per week, given two training lists, surgical trainee given one, that's because, given one, because they've got operating theatres to attend, they've got other things to attend, they've got a different portfolio that they've got to actually get through, that's why these guys suffer. All trainees are reviewed over three months and GRE, therapeutics, etc. are offered under a different system. So accredited training centres, fully accredited centres, they offer all these courses. This course is mandatory, this course is mandatory, these courses are not mandated. The only way that you actually say to this is that it's not mandated that you be trained a trainer, but if you want to be a trainer, fifty percent of your trainers have to have done that course. If you've not done it, then you're not a training centre. <coughs> it's simple. So you're not telling them to have to do it. You're just saying, if you want to be a training centre, 50% of them have to have done it. Mentorship is offered. I observe the training. So in other words, like what Samson and I have been doing, we work together, and that's a mentorship programme. So we share information and we support you guys. 
all me and faculty aligned to attend another training. So in other words, me coming here enables these guys to look at me and feedback to me and see whether I'm still enthusiastic, see whether I'm still able to cut the mustard as it were, to see if I'm up to the mark. If my standards are dropping, I work with these guys closely and go, I expect them to tell me. They expect me to say something to them, so I'll say something, and I expect them to say the same thing to me. It's very old. We've developed endoscopy RLS courses. Now, that's something new for you guys. <clears throat> what happens is, is that things don't go to plan in a room. So things don't go to plan, you need a way of actually looking at them and being able to manage the complication. So what we do through playing back to the room, we sit in here and observe, and then we set scenarios. And we'll say, patient's blood pressure's dropping. Patient's just had a massive bulimia. Patient's stop breathing. And watch how they manage. So these are the type of courses you can bring here. It actually is great for the guys. It's great for the juniors who are doing it. It puts them in a stressful situation, but a safe stressful situation. But also for the tech guys. Now what we've got is the new DOPS forms, completely different to the ones you guys have been filling in. But what they do, they brought all this into a line. So lower GI, upper GI, dilatation, so they're separating everything. Upper GI bleeding, paediatric, etc. We've now got pre-learning side. So this isn't compulsory yet. But when you come to a course like this, and I know that Sash is looking into it, and so for the next course, hopefully we'll be able to pilot it, where we'll put presentations online and where we'll have the audio over the top of it. Guys will have all this information, resources, they'll log into it. You'll have that opportunity sent to you at a later date. And then you'll be able to go on and look at one on endoscopy consent, one of this. You have to be able to log into this. And this is a system that um, Sazda and I and Vakar will be looking at and then seeing what we can actually support you guys with. So these are some of the things that we do, safe diathermia, safe sedation, cons consent. Health Education England, this is more to do with the surgeons. Health Education England I'm part of because of this new stupid role. But what happens is, is that I have to meet with these guys every three months and do some interviews and we do time with them. Health Education England are responsible for the training of registrars in endoscopy. So the, the deanery. So what they do is, is that they've asked us to look at how you can actually support our <coughs> surgical trainees. Surgical trainees get one list a week if they're lucky. As a result of the one list a week, what happens then is that those guys then don't have the numbers when they're getting ready to be a consultant. They don't. They need a number threshold to reach to say I'm not there yet. Some people have to do 300, not 200, etc. Because of the meeting that will say no, he's not there yet. He needs to do another 50. What they want you to do is do it as a block, so three, four months. Complete, continued placements in endoscopy, so you'll do eight lists. So, and the theory is, is that doing it continuously drip feeding, <laughs> you'll do three steps forward advancement, two steps back, and over a five year period, you hopefully get there. For a saturation of three, four months, they assume that you will be actually very good and competent. These are the 26 sites throughout the country. East Midlands is my unit. As you can see, some in Northern Ireland, two in Scotland, three in Wales. Um, the, the only centre outside of the UK that is affiliated with this setup is this centre. This is the only centre that runs the courses in a line with what's being offered. So what are the options for Pakistan to adopt this system? If you adopt it, there are some issues. If you adapt it, there are some issues. And if you allow it to evolve, there are some of the issues. So the adoption process, if you look at how to adopt a child, this is how you would do it in the UK. But this is how you would actually set someone up for training. So you do a pre-stage assessment. Initial checks, your registration, how you adopt it, how you look, exactly, should you read it. <coughs> training and assessment criteria. So we train you, we assess you, but we look at what you assess us. We train you to be a parent. Next one, matching up with the right child, matching up with the right trainer, matching you up with the right service, matching you up with the right facilities. At the end, moving out together, but accomplishing the target. 
So in adopting something, you adopt it literally. You actually take on the process and say, yeah, this is it without question. Adaption, an example of adaption is when, say, for sensory adaption here. So you've got smell of all uh, smoke in your car. After about 20 minutes, half an hour, you no longer smell it, but it doesn't stop you driving the car. So it's very similar to when you do endoscopy. It doesn't stop you achieving the target. But if you actually adapt what you do, make it fit for purpose, that might be more appropriate for Pakistan. Because if you literally take on board what we do, it challenges a lot of infrastructure you've got here uh, currently. A lot of people may feel uncomfortable with it. So to adapt it for its purpose would be more appropriate. To evolve, evolution takes a long time. Now if you want something to be improved and evolve, you are going to have to put a lot of effort and time into it. But you need to make it fit, as we say in the UK, for purpose. So to control the great beast of endoscopy, I'm not looking for these great big strong geezers who are holding back this push. What we need is a more structured approach. So to reduce the risk of, for our patients, what we need to do is, I think what you need to do in Pakistan, is adapt, adopt, evolve. Mix it all up as a group, this is throughout the country, and then you can actually develop a foundation for proper training in Pakistan to serve everybody. So, to conclude, for greater impact, you've got more resources if you work together, it will reduce costs if you actually share. The cost is in time, not necessarily financial. You spread the risk by supporting people through the system, and there are new and better ways of working that you share. But if you work together, you'll actually gain the mutual benefit, which is having people out there who are able to deliver a quality service for the patients. And that's it. That's what I roughly did. One thing I regret not saying. But I will say it now. One thing I will say is, is that if Pakistan was a live entity, not just a country, but if a live entity and it was your father, and if we look at places in Islamabad or you know, and we're looking at Karachi and other places, and those were his children, his children are not playing well together. So I would expect my father to give you all a slap round the ear roll and then get you to work together. So at the end of the day, you're playing all individually, you need to play together. And that's all I'll say on the matter. Any questions? I stunned you into silence. Pastor, what do you think? Ha, ha, ha.